Hello, beautiful people, and welcome, hi, to my first video on the newest Divine Ingenuity event. I am announcing with this video that I will be holding a domain creation contest with five different categories, where if you have what I very subjectively will decide to be my favorite domain in any of the five categories, you'll win 50 bucks, and where at the end, we'll vote with chat on who chat's favorite domain out of all of them is, and for the winner, I'll donate 250 bucks to the charity of their choice. The goal with this isn't just, hey, I want to get content very poggers. It's also that if you actually take the time to make a good domain, it can actually be really fun to play it. And it would be really nice to have a database of a bunch of really good and well done domains that people put a bunch of effort into that you can just parse through. You can just look at and pick one that looks fun out of a bunch of different categories if you want to be playing. Because let's be real, there, there is an official like domain sharing thing, but it's a little sus. And the actual like official categories that you have, right? You, you have combat, parkour, mechanics, kiss defense Th these are the best categories it's a little eh, it leaves a little bit to be desired and basically even if you yourself aren't a huge fan of creating domains you don't really have any inspiration any particular ideas you can join the discord which is where people will be able to submit their their domains just because there will be a bunch of domains that have been submitted and hopefully you can find some that will be fun so here are the five categories we have the roguelike puzzle multiplayer platforming and freestyle the reason why I'm separating it like this is because just having combat isn't that fun. The baseline combat systems that they've implemented in the domain creation are not the greatest. There's a lot of enemies that are missing. All in all, it's just kind of meh. But the like way that your characters can get stronger by progressing and all of that, that can actually be really fun. So having a you know natural progression over a few different areas can actually make for really fun combat. Puzzle, pretty self-explanatory. Multiplayer, because honestly, that's the main thing that Genshin is lacking, right? They, they, they advertise themselves at the beginning as a multiplayer game, and there is no actual multiplayer content. So I'm sure there's a lot of people that started playing because they thought there would be fun multiplayer and then just haven't been able to scratch that itch ever since. There's a lot of really cool things you can do with multiplayer with these custom domains, and it would be fun to have a bunch of multiplayer levels that you can play with your friends or with other people from my discord server true platforming also pretty straightforward it's just parkour or uh, whatever sort of platforming and then freestyle is just anything that doesn't fit these four previous categories or that's some sort of mix of both uh so i'm gonna go through a few example domains that i made for each of these categories just to give you an idea of the kind of stuff that i would expect to see that being said this is not like a hard guideline at the end of the day i want to see a bunch of different shit i want you guys to get as creative as you can because that's what's going to be fun first example is the is the roguelite on this one if i were to submit it i would say a few things like in my submission but basically the idea on this one is you have a bunch of different monuments one of each element uh, that each have the same amount of currency inside of them and basically the more different elements you put in your team the more currency you can get so this is a roguelike that would incentivize teams that have four different elements a lot more than other types of teams right and this is something that i would include in the description of my domain so that people can know that before actually attempting it so let's go through it let's let, let's do let's do thundering furry why not so, because I've got four different elements, I can unlock four different chests. And get money from them, from them accordingly. And then here, I can spend my money at a buff station. The way that this is done is it gives me three randomly out of a certain amount that there can be. Uh, these are kind of shit, but whatever, let's do this. Right now we don't have any buffs that can do it, but maybe we'll get one on the, on the next floor. Uh, and here, you just have a, a, a bunch of enemies. I didn't make them too difficult because I was just trying to showcase an example. But obviously, you can make it as hard or as easy as you want. Just ideally say in your description if it's supposed to be hard or easy so that people who want to experience something a little bit more difficult can do that. And people who just want to, you know, vibe with something that isn't too difficult can also do that. Yeah, whatever. Um, okay, so uh, again, here, I can unlock one for each element that I have. And that's pretty cool. Now I go on to the next one. And here, I've got two different options. Buff Station or Mechanicai. So here what I could do is I could go for a buff station, get a random buff, or I could get 
some Mechanicus thingies that I could then spend my currency to build and get a bunch of additional elemental application. I'm not gonna go for the buff just because I might as well show the other thing that you can do. Now, Mechanicae cost 20 each. Uh, you can upgrade them for 15. But let's just do a Hydro one and a Cryo one, whatever. It doesn't really matter because, again, I didn't balance this to be very difficult. It was just meant to be an example. And then you can do this. Very cool. Wow, Pog. <laughs> And that's that. Honestly, go as crazy as you want. Take advantage of a bu bunch of different mechanics. You can go and incentivize playing around Mechanicai. Incentivize mono element teams by, I, I, I don't know, you, like, go crazy. The more creative, the better. Just wanna have a bunch of different possible gameplay experiences. Obviously, this is only like three levels. Ideally, it generally tends to feel more fun if there's more than three. So you can take advantage of the upper limit, which I think is six. Might be eight, I'm not sure. Uh, but th this is just supposed to be an example, so I didn't think it was necessary to go all the way there. Oh, also, uh, a few things for the roguelike that can be useful information. Characters start at level 70, uh, and then 75, 80, 85, 90, I think, based on level ups. And level ups happen when you get a certain amount of artificer experience. 2,000 is what's necessary for the net for the first level up, and then you need an additional 4,000 for the next one, and then an, an additional 6,000 for the next one, and then an additional 8,000 for the next one. So you can balance your stuff around that, try to have the level ups happen at the, whatever moment you'd like. Downloading a new character, which is another thing you can do. You can make people start with only one character, and try to, you know, build a team along the way. Downloading a character costs 100 currency. Getting a buff costs 40 currency. Mechanicai costs 20 and then 15 and then 20 and then 25 for the three upgrades that they can have. When you go into your domain creation and you put a chest, you can put a bunch of different things inside of them. You can also put money. But one other interesting that you can do is when you go for a buff station or a summon station, I think. I don't know if you can do it for a summon station. No, you can't do it from a, for a summon station. But for a buff station, you can have it have a bunch of possible buffs, but then you can decide how many you actually get. So you can make it so that you can get at all of the different buffs, but only three random ones are selected. So you can do something very similar to what is in uh, Sim Universe, or honestly a lot of roguelikes, where you have, uh, you, you divide up your buffs in, in certain tiers of the good ones, the medium ones, and the kind of whatever ones, and then you put all of the medium ones in whatever buff station after the first level or whatever, and three random are selected that you can choose to buy. And then after a boss, you could have all of the good ones and three randoms are selected that you can choose to buy. Play around with that, honestly, and go crazy. Just ha have fun with it, get creative. Next up, puzzle. So you basically just have any sort of puzzle. So the, the, the idea behind this one is relying on Sayu's uh, self-infusion to apply elements to things. So here we've got our mushroom and it can bring us up to this, but there's nothing else in the room until you look up and you realize that there's a platform over there. So what you're supposed to do, you get your electro, And you can use the mushroom like this. On the second one, very similar thing. There's a torch, there's a pyro thing, and it spawns a jump platform. And then here, there's two pressure plates. And you might use your ult and realize, oh no, Sayu's ult doesn't actually have any weight to it. So if I use my ult, it doesn't do anything. What you're actually supposed to do is you're supposed to push the enemy onto the platform. Stop hitting him, please. Oh my. You're supposed to push the enemy onto the platform by manipulating his AI and go onto the other, on, onto the other one. Move on to the next one. That's basically like the three tutorial sections. And this is the actual puzzle that takes advantage of all of these mechanics and puts them all together into an actual puzzle. Uh, I'm not gonna do it, but that's the basic idea. Again, you can get as creative as you want. You can use any sort of mechanics. There's a lot of mechanics in this game that are pretty niche and that most people don't know about that you can build levels around. Next one, multiplayer. So I will invite people in chat to uh, join my world so I can showcase a few of the multiplayer ones that I made. Now, when it comes to multiplayer, you can do co-op content, but you can also do PvP content. You can't be hitting each other, but you can be competing in different ways. I made two examples of multiplayer domains, one PvP and one co-op. Let's start with the PvP one, because why not, I guess? Thank you for picking only Hydro and Dendro units. <laughs> I don't actually know if this is going to be good, but it's okay. Whatever. Why did I do that, actually? <laughs> I should have used my... the, 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 the E1. <laughs> Wait, I'm giving it to you as well, aren't I? Wait, this was a terrible idea. It's fine. 
Let's yoink the energy from the other side. Yes, sir. And I actually made a thing here where if I if you go back, you can actually take this, but ugh, there we go. And it kills the next one, but as soon as they kill theirs, it closes the door here. So if I'm still over there while they close the door, I lose. But because I managed to get there, I am probably going to be winning. Let's go and try to stand inside of the Nahida E or the Nahida ult so we get the EM bonus. I'm rotating. Okay, we're fine. Yeah. And I have managed to clear before them. And so I win. And it does even at the end tell you how many points each player got, which means that you don't have to do something that's like necessarily separated. You can put both players in the same area and try to figure out or just have them both compete for the same sort of thing where whoever gets the most of them win. I've also made an example of a multiplayer co-op domain. I believe it's this one. Now this co-op domain locks you to specific characters. And as you're gonna see at the very, very beginning of the domain, it makes it very clear who needs to be on which characters, right? I have a pyro and an electro monument here, and they have a cryo and an animal monument over there. So it's pretty clear who needs to go what. Now here, there's a pyro monument here and a pyro monument over there. So we have to use Sayu's ability to self-infuse to let her go and apply pyro to that element. The next one, exact same thing with Electro. Well, Dory's ult applies Electro to all allies, so you can do the exact same thing. And then on this one, we use Chongyun's infusion, right? It's not actually like, uh, it doesn't reach, but Chongyun's infusion does last a little bit even after you leave, so you can still go and do it. And just like that, we get to the next area. Here, they are stuck in here with two enemies and no way to leave, and I, have to do the puzzle and they have to survive while I do it. So I take some cryo and I go and take this. Now I get some currency with which I can go and buy Kazuha. Now I can't swap party right now. Oh, I can't swap party. I didn't get aggro. Sometimes you're gonna catch aggro from them. And if you do, what you can do is you can go all the way over here and hit this, which is gonna kill them and make them respawn instantly. But that's gonna drop aggro on you even if they re-aggro onto, onto your partner. Then I come back here get some cryo again to go and hit this monument but this time i can't reach so what i'm gonna have to do is i'm gonna have to use this to spawn an enemy and then apply cryo to that enemy and charge attack him oops so that i can what the go and apply cryo to that now they can go and enter the door and we get to the next room now in this room i have a hydro monument and no way to apply hydro to myself they have I built an energy machine that's basically gonna repeatedly insta kill a rune guard and generate elemental particles, and they have to use that energy machine to go and uh, there's some cryo monuments that they can only reach with Chongyun's ult. I guess we can see one of them. I think yeah, over there. Right, we can see one of them over there. There's three of them. They have to go and get all three, which is gonna activate this thing. And now what I need to do is I need to get hit by a hydro wave. I got frozen, so I didn't manage to keep, to keep it. I gotta get hit by a hydro wave and swap out of him before I get frozen. <laughs> now, a little bit of a ping issue here. It's not even ping issue, it's, it's just skill issue. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we're gonna run out of time. We're gonna have to restart. It is what it is. Thanks to the magic of editing, YouTube won't even know I f***ed up. Okay, let's try to do it faster. Insta E, E, E! Now you might think, can't you just leave? No, I cannot. <laughs> there we go. I got it on the first try this time. So I can go this, open the chest. Now, with the money that I just got from the chest, they can go and summon or invite Wanderer and Albedo. Once they've invited Wanderer and Albedo, they have to run away from the enemies to drop their aggro. Then they can change their party to Wanderer and Albedo, which they're gonna do in a second. We don't talk about the red thing. There it is. And then they go back there. And as you can see, I mean, you guys can't see, but there is no ceiling on the thing over there. So they just have to go over it and hopefully, it doesn't take them too many attempts, and they actually do manage to do it in the 54 seconds we have left, right? Oh, I, I saw their name. Did they get it? Nope, they're back down. Please. Please. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no. Oh, no. <laughs> 
I mean, we, we, we went basically through the whole thing, so you, you get the idea. And then you can laugh at your friends if they're the reason why you lose. <laughs> but yeah, so that's the idea behind the multiplayer one here. Again, right? Co-op or PvP. And then the last one that I wanted to show is the platforming one. I forgot to restrict characters to Kazuha only, but it's supposed to be Kazuha only. <laughs> yeah, so very, very similar idea here. You have to carry your element over to the monument. And infuse it. And that spawns a coin, which lets you go to the next area. And it gets progressively more difficult. I only made three areas. Again, right? I'm not entering the competition myself. So I, I don't need to make them, like, complete. Yeah, and here, you might notice, oh, wow, that thing is pretty far. I can't make that. Can I get on top of this? No, I can't. Oh, no, what am I going to do? Well, if, you, if we try again here, and we actually keep holding forward this time oh we can hover on this well that's the mechanic that we gotta use it's very hard to get the right angle but i think i might have gotten it yeah we got it and that spawns the coin, which in my case is a clear condition. You can make as many progressively harder uh, levels as you want. Take advantage of whatever mechanic you want. Just make it interesting, make it creative, make it unique. I want to see as much cool shit as possible. And I'm sure that everyone else who's going to be playing the levels want that as well. Uh, and then freestyle, I, I, I didn't make an example of, of, a, of a freestyle domain. It's just really, if you if you got something that doesn't fit the other four categories, but you think it's a really cool idea anyways, I don't want you to not be able to submit your idea, right? Uh, which is where this comes from. So if you, if you, it, it can be a, a combat domain that doesn't have roguelike elements, but yeah. Another thing that is very important that I forgot to mention, try to take advantage, especially in the roguelike domains or in the puzzle domains, or maybe even in the platforming and the multiplayer domains, really take advantage of the fact that you can limit which characters are allowed to be used. Within the roguelike system, you can use that to make it so that you have to start with only one character or something like that, or only with pretty weak characters, and you can unlock stronger characters by spending currency on them. I, I basically did that in the, the co-op multiplayer domain that I did, where you had to spend currency on unlocking characters that would help you progress, basically through the puzzles. Take advantage of that feature. It's a really good thing to add. Like, the, the fact that they added it is so, so good. Now, in order to submit, all you need to do is go to my Discord server, go to the channel that we're going to set up for submissions. Ah, uh, yes, this is for any region. When I get to looking at them, I will make sure that I have access to accounts that have the event unlocked in every single region. One thing, you can submit in multiple categories, but you can't win in multiple categories because I don't know, I feel like it would be kind of kind of shitty if the same person won everything. Only one in each category, but if your previous one uh, you don't like as much anymore before I get around to, to looking at it, or if you improve it, you can go and uh, delete your submission and submit another one. Now, I don't actually know how many submissions I'm going to get. I'm hoping that I'll be able to, to look at every single submission, but obviously I, I, I've never done a contest like this before, so I have no idea how many submissions I'm going to get. And it's very possible that like we get get too many submissions for me to physically be able to actually test all of them, especially if some of them are pretty long. So I think what I'm going to do is if we end up getting too many, I'll basically go off of what other people think of it. So if you don't have any ideas for submissions or if even if you do, but you still want to try other people's levels, go to the submission channel and under each, each message, we'll set it up so that there's a um, uh, reaction emote for like an upvote or a thumbs up or whatever. And we'll go off of the ones that are the most liked, basically. I know it's not a perfect system because you might get something that just no one ends up actually trying, which is why if I don't have time to go through all of them, I will ask uh, people I, I trust to go through them and see what they think of it. If there's, if there's some levels that are like less liked that have a lot of potential and that I might've missed. Uh, but again, right, it's just, I've never done something like this before. So I have no idea the scale that we're gonna get. And I, I am really hoping that I'll be able to look at all of them. The submission time limit for this, you have until the 20th at 
8 a.m. EST. So I'll ask I'll ask the editors to uh, have something that's actually readable. Just so that there's no like confusion on what time and what day it is going to be for you. But yeah, that's basically it. Starting on the 20th, I will be starting to evaluate submissions on stream. Uh, I might start evaluating submissions before that. So when you submit, be aware that like I, I might I might look at it before the 20th. Uh, just because again, right, if the more we get of it, uh, the harder it'll be to get through all of them if I wait until the 20th. Another thing that I'll try to do is for the winners, I'll try to make it so that one of my mods or a volunteer from each time zone tries to recreate the level in each, maybe not on Taiwan because no one's on, on it because I, I don't know if, if I'm going to be able to find anyone willing to do it on the Taiwan server because it's a, such a smaller server. But at least on the on the NA, on the EU and on the Asia server, I'm going to see if I can get someone to basically recreate the winning levels in the other two servers. Now, when you submit your submission or whatever, what I want to see is obviously the code for your level, the category you're submitting under, any information relating to things that would be better to know beforehand. So, for example, in my roguelite level that I showcase, you would put something like the more elements you have, the more rewards or the, the more upgrades you can get. For the puzzle level that I made with Sayu, because it has a tutorial like ver like starting three levels, you wouldn't necessarily need to put a description, but if you want to make it easier, you can. And then also on top of any anything like that, I want you to tell me how hard your level is like supposed to be. Because I'm not going to evaluate them based on only like how difficult they are and how much fun I would have. I'll try my best to look at levels that are made to be a bit easier if they're really well made as a level that's made to be easier to ev evaluate that accordingly but if you think your level is meant to be hard and it's easy then that might not be the case anyways just say how, how difficult you you were intending your level to be maybe on a scale of like easy medium difficult and I guess very difficult stuff that you need to actually like spend hours on to, to get to get them properly by the way if, if you do some levels that are really really difficult I might not actually finish them I might end up being like well let's go take a look at at the level design and and, and anything that I, I'm not able to get to but again just because I'm not able to clear it doesn't mean that uh, it can't be good it's really all about what you were intending it to be uh, and then for the uh, multiplayer specify if it's supposed to be co-op or PvP and any other information you think would be important to know before starting your level but yeah that's it for the the rules for the submissions again right I am reiterating this because I really Really want to emphasize it. My goal with this is to just create a data bank of a bunch of different fun levels that my community has spent time working on. Because I think you guys can be really good at designing shit and Hoyoverse doesn't really care. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of the event and level design in Genshin isn't necessarily bad, but it's not, the design intent is not to make them fun very often. Sometimes the design intent is just to play into human psychology to get you addicted to the gacha system. That's what mobile games and gacha games very often tend to do. And a lot of the really cool shit that you can do with Genshin systems just aren't explored at all because it wouldn't be profitable for them to do it. It wouldn't make people spend more money on the gacha system. Them. which means there's a lot of cool shit that can be done and they're not gonna do it so I'm trying to you know give a little incentive for people to do it so that there's more content for people to play you know so again if you yourself are not interested in entering the contest you should still join the discord so you can look at a bunch of different levels and that's part of why I want to see not just hard levels but also easy and medium and very hard levels so that if you're going into the submissions channel to try to find domains that you'd want to do you can find something for you, you can find something for whatever you feel like doing at, at that time discord link will be in the description and we we will be making videos on the domain submission. Oh, and by the way, uh, $50 USD. So yeah, which as, as a Canadian hurts me because <laughs> currency conversion is not in my favor, but that's okay. <laughs> For the multiplayer levels, I might also make a video getting some other creators to try my levels. Some of them are uh, a little, not necessarily cruel, but very, yeah, yeah, very yeah. Anyways, uh, that's gonna be it for the video. Like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And uh, submit, submit as, as much as you want, right? Even if you don't win, I hope that you have fun creating levels and trying other people's levels. And try other people's levels, they're gonna be fun. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. See ya.